window. I just found it, bing, 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 you know. And uh, they write him off. They take his name and everything. But then they want to know his phone number. And he gives them a phone number, but he gives them the phone number, not his phone number. He gives the phone number to the agency in New York, which I was pleased with. <laughs> you know, and again, I had to get uh, the FBI involved in that. Told them what happened and the whole bit. And they told me, don't worry, it'll be fine, everything is fine. I was not really happy. You know, the guys, let me put that out there. So the, the guys in Vegas, the FBI, FBI guys that I work closely with, those guys were aces. But the FBI guys in New York were, to me, a bunch of schmucks. Okay? That's pretty much what they were. All right. So all of a sudden you have, uh, what, the uh, uh, district attorney's office in New York? They're calling you up because they well, want they, Yeah, they're calling. Yeah, well, yeah, they're calling. Yeah, they want me to contact them and this and that. Then I hook up with this FBI agent, you know, who, who I uh, was, you know, sent to. He said, you talk to him. He took over for another guy. He's a young guy, you know, a little wet behind the ears. I was unsure of him from the beginning. And my fears were founded later on. Uh but he said, no, everything's going to be all right. All they wanted to do was talk to you over the phone. I said, fine. I talked to him over the phone. Next thing I know, this DA is saying, well, we want this driver. We got to have this driver. You know, we could shut you down in like a minute, you know, and, you know, like it was like, like you wouldn't believe. And, you know, this was an overzealous DA. I remember this guy. You know? And, uh, you know, he wanted was to that, drive. Was it? So. Was Elliot Spitzer around at this point? Sure he was. He was the attorney general. Of New York. Okay. So the, the DA's office is, is putting the squeeze on you. They want, they want yeah. you basically to say who threw the gun out the window? Yeah, those are the people who work. Those, that's the state, the state, the district attorney's office. They work for Elliot Spitzer. Okay. All right. Yeah. They want, uh, they want the driver now. We want to talk to the driver. That's all we want. That's all we want. We want to talk to the driver, you know. But... You know, I should know better at the time because I know that uh, these people are all liars. You know, they are. And uh, so I arrange a meeting with the driver for them. Now they want to talk to me, too. I'm telling this FBI guy, he says, I thought everything's going to be all right. I did what you said. They talked to the, oh, no, 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 they want to talk to you now. You got to go talk to them now. I says, thanks a lot. I says, I wasn't there. I didn't find a gun. But what am I going to say to them? So... Then they get me in a room there downtown at Center Street, you know. And they really got it in for this guy, you know, I find out, because they sent two cops to pick me up in Brooklyn, you know. It was in a coffee shop. They sent two cops to pick me up. And I wasn't going to drive down there. And to, uh, to take me there. Now, what I found out was that the cops that, that are in on the investigation from the beginning, the ones that arrested Puffy Combs and everything, they all automatically get assigned to the DA, and the DA gets to use them to do their errands and stuff, you know. So these cops were actually there. They were the ones. They, they're the ones that were driving me down. They were the ones there for the for the pinch, of puffy combs and everything. And they're telling me stories how they how they used to harass them every time they saw them on the street and everything else, and for no reason, you know, just because they didn't like the guy, <laughs> you know, and because he was black. And I said, I'm looking around. I'm saying, where am I? Where, where am I now here? What am I, pre-Civil War Atlanta or somewhere? I mean, what's going on with these people? I didn't even think that these cops had mentality like that anymore. But anyway, I get down to the DA's office, and I go in there. And, of course, I got this guy with me. All right. And, uh, and I start telling the story, you know, about the whole deal and everything. You know. And uh, the DA says, you know, we're going to go after this guy. There's not going to be no deals made, and you know, and everything else. And, uh, you know. And then my guy says, you know, it looks like a woman threw the threw the threw the gun out of the out of the Lincoln Navigator. It looks like a woman's hand. Presumably Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, yeah. But apparently uh, they didn't want to go in that direction. You know, you know, it was Puffy they wanted. They wanted to go after him. You know, for whatever reason. And uh, the DA pretty much said, you know, he's a he's a black guy with too much money, and he's too arrogant. I mean, that was their reason for wanting to take this. To the wall, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, but I felt that maybe a deal was going to be cut or something like that, that this was never going to go to trial. I mean, these guys are crazy. No, they wanted to take it to trial. They wanted to bury this guy. 
they wanted the buried. It was very a lot of prejudice. I never saw anything. I never would have believed it. If you tell me this today, and I didn't live through it, I'd say, you know, I am nuts. This, this don't go on anymore. I mean, and the fact that you're not cooperating with this, uh, they decide to take it out on you. Well, they did later, yeah, because they wanted to put me on the stand, and I had nothing to say about the guy. I had nothing to say. All I could tell about my involvement, then his attorney attacked me because he, he accused me of uh, testifying against. I said I never testified against anybody, which I did. Then he calls me a liar. So then I tell his lawyer, listen, I'm not qualified to lie. I never went to law school. <laughs> so he so, didn't like that. The judge made the jury leave the room. Everybody went in an uproar. You know, but I couldn't really help them. And, you know, because, you know, and SDA was trying to coerce me into saying, well, couldn't you say this or couldn't you say that? Or maybe this happened. Why don't you think about it? They were doing it to my driver, too. And he's, he's an immigrant. He's scared, you know. You say, well, wait a minute. You say what happened and the way it happened, and that's it. Okay? Not that this could have been this way, or he saw the guy, or he saw Puffy. They were trying to say, he's telling her, look, it was, a, it was a guy. I don't know how many girls were in the car with this guy, but he's saying a woman's, it was a woman's arm that threw the gun out. He didn't know it was a gun at the time, but he saw a woman's arm throw this object out the window. And they're trying to say, well, couldn't you say you saw his face? And he's, you know, what do you want the guy to do? Say that he rolled down the window, smiled at him, and threw the gun out the window? And his DA got upset with me. I said, you know. I mean, I don't know where you guys are headed. You're looking to hang a guy, and uh, I really don't want no part of it. I don't know the guy. I got nothing against the guy, you know. And, well, uh, you know, <laughs> what are you putting this in this position for? Well, the guy they end up hanging, in effect, is you, because you won't cooperate. So, Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that probably led to, uh, yeah, that probably led to things happening to me, yeah. So, but, but, I mean, all of that information about your cooperation with the FBI came spilling out in the papers as a result of you not yeah. cooperating yeah. in this investigation yeah, of Puppy Combs. That wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. The FBI and the guy that they call uh, the ADIC, that's a good name for him, too. That means assistant director. But that is a good name that they gave the guy, eh, Dick? Uh, yeah, that guy decided, well, he said, well, I said, you know, I've been cooperating with you guys. I said, you know, you guys have been, you know, making me, at the time I was, uh, they wanted certain agencies they were looking at. Well, hold on here, Tony. Yeah. Um, basically, to summarize for our listeners, the fact that you would not cooperate in putting away Puffy Combs led to the disclosure that you'd been working with the FBI, and that largely is why today you're living underground. Now, when we come back after this break, uh, you ever had a question for a mob guy? Because you're going to get a chance to ask him. Stick around, everyone. I'm George Knapp on Coast to Coast AM. 